Hello and welcome to our service the Church Without Walls. Swing on behalf of All Saints Lockbrook and St. Stephen's Borough It's lovely connecting with you wherever you are throughout the world, and I hope you're keeping safe and well. Well, I want to wish everybody, especially today, a very happy Easter. Today, we as a Christian church celebrate the fact that over 2,000 years ago, this Easter day, our Lord and Saviour rose from the dead three days after he had given his life and all for us, hanging upon the cross. By his actions, he took upon himself our sins and gave each one of us a chance for a new life. So let each of us think about what that means to us as we listen and partake in today's service, as Christ died for each and every one of us to give us a chance in new life. So let's take a moment of silence and then begin with a prayer. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The reading is from John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 23. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, some of the children from our church family have recently sent me some pictures of their Easter drawings for which they each received an Easter egg from me. Um, I thought I'd show you them as we begin. And so here's the pictures I received. And they're from Dan, uh, Felicity and Livy, Benji and Martha, and Noah and Alana. Thank you all so much for these lovely pictures. They are great. Well, each Thursday evening through Lent, we've been having a meditation on different uh, images from the east window here in All Saints. And uh, here's a picture uh, of the window. Our focus today, Easter Day, is the central image. And you can see there Jesus literally exploding from the tomb. And if you look at his left side, so that's the right side as you look at the picture, you can just make out some rays of light and power emanating from him. Over the years that I've been the vicar here uh, in Oldbrook and Barwash, I've spent literally hours in front of that window. Each Christmas day, when everyone has gone home, I spend time alone in silence, just meditating on the window, bringing to mind the prophetic words of a young child who said, if you want to find the meaning of Christmas, then stop opening presents and just listen. I've always thought those are wonderful words. They resonate well with us in an Easter context too. It seems with this image of Jesus in this window, the more I look, the more I see. One thing that struck me this year, and it never has before, how clean and sanitised it all looks in the glass. In one sense, it's an attempt to tidy away all the mess, uh, to contain the uncontainable, like trying to freeze fire. If we want life in our churches, then one of the messages of Easter Day is surely that we must accept the wild, messy uncertainty of a resurrected Jesus who has his own agenda 
and therefore doesn't feel the need to fit in with how we do things. There's a challenge for us. Well, that wild Jesus is the Jesus who appeared in our reading from John chapter 20. John writes on the evening of that first day of the week, that first Easter day, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them. John chapter 20, verse 19. Many think that was the same room they'd celebrated the Passover in a few days before, and where the Spirit came on Pentecost. The doors were closed because the disciples were fearful. But those doors also function in the narrative to stress the miraculous appearance of Jesus. We need to really see that. Just as his resurrection body had passed through the grave clothes in the tomb, so it passes through the locked doors into this room. There's something wild, uncontrollable, enigmatic, mysterious, miraculous about the Easter day Jesus. Well, John goes on. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and he said, peace be with you. Peace be with you. In the Hebrew that Jesus would have spoken, um, he would have used the word shalom. And we translate that as may God give you every good thing. They'd been through a lot, those disciples. They needed that deep, healing, transformative sense of well-being that that shalom peace could bring them. And I was thinking of you and I, we've been through a lot too, haven't we, over the last year? Locked behind our door, the doors of our homes for a long time, fearful of COVID-19. And now some of us are fearful perhaps of leaving the comfort and isolation of the home and gradually returning to some kind of normality. We need peace. We need shalom, that shalom that the risen Jesus brings us. It's God's peace. It's peace with God, peace from God, peace for us, and also peace that we should share with the whole world. I think it was Bob Marley who said, those trying to ruin the world never take time off. That's a challenge to God's peacemakers too. Well, John goes on with these words. After he said this, that was peace be with you, he showed them his hands and side, and the disciples were overjoyed to see the Lord. I used to find these words deeply enigmatic, that the risen Jesus, resurrected from the dead, still had on his body those marks of crucifixion. I remember years ago, Canon Dr. Michael Green, an eminent um, clergyman in the Church of England, telling me of an Anglican bishop he knew in the Far East, who had been raised from the dead through prayer. I joked with Michael that the greatest miracle in that sentence was surely he was an Anglican. Michael told me the bishop was overjoyed, but a little miffed too. Can you imagine that, being miffed after being raised from the dead? And I asked Michael as to why someone could be miffed after they'd been raised from the dead. And Michael said that the bishop had been raised, but now had a constant back pain, which apparently he didn't have before he died. Make of that what you will. But that speaks to me again of the wildness and the ambiguity and the rough edges around the Easter miracle. But how incredible for those of us who are hurting today, for those of us who are in need, for all of us in the difficulties we face and our loved ones may be facing, that 
in Jesus, God identifies with us in our pain. He comes to where we are in power. He comes to the brokenness and he comes to bring us peace. It was by those scars that they recognised him. They, they were reminded of the cost of following Jesus. But those scars remind us that God identifies with us in all the difficulties we face in our life. I pray that that will be true for you today. Well, John continues, as the Father, Jesus says, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Verse 22. We come, I think, to the centre of gravity of this passage. The Holy Spirit, who St Paul later in the Bible calls the power by which Christ Jesus was raised from the dead. The Holy Spirit is given by Jesus to those disciples to equip and empower them, empower them to continue his mission. Not for a knees up in the church, but to be God's microphones in the world, to be God's eyes and ears, hands and feet in the midst of all the world's needs. They were called by the power of the Holy Spirit to awaken the world to the cross-shaped love of God. As we come at the moment tentatively into our future, these things remain the bedrock of our faith. The risen Lord Jesus is with you today. Death is not a full stop. It's a new beginning. He equips us, yes, us, you and me, with the same power by which he was raised from the dead. A power perfected even in our weaknesses. He commissions us to live for him to share the good news, to become part of the solution to the crises we all face at the moment, the pandemics, poverty, environmental catastrophe, wars, authoritarian regimes, friends and family and neighbours and colleagues who may feel a need to find their way home to God but just don't know how. We're called in the power of the Spirit into the mission of God to make a difference. Last December, um, Zoe and I had a Christmas cactus here in the vicarage and it flowered. It was beautiful. But then after a few weeks, it looked dead, so dead I was going to throw it in the brown bin. But I'm so glad I didn't. It's just burst into life again and it's covered in beautiful long red flowers. That Christmas cactus is a reminder to me of the bounce back ability of nature around us. New life can burst out of the most unexpected places. The author G.K. Chesterton once observed that in its history, at least five times, the Christian faith, the church, has to all appearances gone to the dogs. But, he says, in the end, it was the dogs who died. The church, with the power of the resurrection at its heart, has an unlimited capacity for bounce back ability. Congregations and even denominations may die. Church buildings may close. But the church, capital C, the body of Christ, will outlive all its challenges and challenges. That will be true in a post-Covid world too. God wants to bring Easter's out of all the Good Fridays we face. Jesus is no longer in the tomb. He is alive, free, wild and seeking those who will follow him and take risks in his name. We don't change the world, even for one person, by how we choose to look at it but how we choose to live in it. So I leave you with this question. What are we going to do now with our resurrected lives? I wish you all a Christ-centred and blessed 
and happy Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. When Jesus needed help, he'd find it's women first to cross the line. There's Mary, who is Jesus' mum. She likes to walk. She doesn't run. Mary, up in Bethany, swift and strong, but did her knee. Mary, mum of James and Joe, runs in the rain and runs in the snow. Mrs. Cleopas, she's a Mary, 100 metres, legendary. The other Mary, if you like, try and beat her on your bike. Then there's Mary Magdalene, the fastest girl you've ever seen. Seven spirits weighed her down till Jesus rocked up in her town. He set her free, she joined his crew. You know that's something you can do. They raced around Galilee, teaching healing, setting free. Then Jesus said, now's the time, Jerusalem, the finish line. Some will fall, all will cry. To win this race, I must die. The road will twist, the road will bend. But when it is finished, it is not the end. Friday, it's finished. Mary cried when Jesus died doom and gloom outside the tomb. Saturday, Mary sat still. Sunday, Mary walked to the garden. Oh no, oh no. Run, Mary, run. Tell Peter and John they've moved the stone. Jesus is gone. Run, Mary, run. Zip and zoom race the boys back to the tomb. Stop, Mary, look, woe of woes. 
They've taken Jesus and left his clothes. Pete looks at John. Extraordinary. We're out of here. Goodbye, Mary. Cry, Mary, cry outside the tomb. Who's that sitting in the gloom? Weeping woman, why the tears? We're listening, angels. We're all ears. Dry your eyes, blow your nose. Pour out your heart between nose blows. My Lord, they've taken him away. I don't know where they've made him lay. Mary sighs and turns around. An earthly man boots on the ground. Big strong hands, a scar or three. Dirt under nails, dirt on his knee. He smells of sweat, of life and soil, of flowers, trees and honest toil. Good, the gardener, thought Mary. They're down to earth, not airy fairy. When you're down, if you're disheartened, you need a bloke who's gone and gardened. Weeping woman, tears on your cheek. Who have you lost? Who do you seek? My Lord, they've taken him away. I don't know where they've made him lay. And Mary weeping, flowing tears of sorrow, hope and strength and fears for everything disheartened her. Then Mary, said the gardener. Teacher, teacher, you're all right. She hugged her Lord and squeezed him tight. Mary, Mary, put me down. I need my feet back on the ground. Now stretch those legs, lace up that shoe. I've got a job for you to do. Run, Mary, run, go tell the crew. The Lord's alive, strange but true. So Mary ran to tell each friend. I've seen the Lord, it's not the end. Hooray for Mary Magdalene, the fastest girl you've ever seen. As we come to our prayers for this Easter Sunday, please use the images of these symbols of our hope in our prayers. The Easter lilies which spread their fragrance and their beauty in our churches. The light from the candle that symbolises the light that shatters the darkness. And above all, the cross that's transformed from an instrument of hideous death into a symbol of faith and hope and the love that lasts forever. And so we come to our prayers now, which are taken from some Easter prayers by David Adam. Blessed are you, God and Father of us all, giver of life and life eternal. By the love of your Son, you have triumphed over hatred. In his power, light has conquered darkness and life has overcome death. You have opened for us the gate of eternal life. Blessed are you, God, now and forever. We give you thanks and praise for the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and for his appearance to his loved ones. We rejoice with the whole church in the joy of the risen Lord. May we know the good news and go and tell others that he is risen. Grant that your church may help to bring peace and hope to a troubled world. And we ask you to give courage to all who have not seen and yet believe. Risen Lord, we seek your peace. Peace for our war-torn world. Peace between nations and people. Peace in our dealings with each other. Peace in our hearts and homes. 
as you appeared to the disciples in their house. Come and enter into our homes. Come into our fear and darkness. Come into our enclosed lives and our fear to venture. Come with the glorious freedom you offer to the children of God. We come with all who weep by gravesides, all who mourn the loss of a loved one, all who feel lonely or deserted. May all who mourn find new hope and joy in you. We remember all who are terminally ill and those who are caring for them. We think of those who have heavy weights on their hearts and minds and tears in their eyes. And we ask that we may all know the hope of eternal life. We rejoice with the disciples and all your saints in the joy of the risen Lord. We ask you to bless all our loved ones departed with the fullness of your light and peace in eternal life. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, in a few moments, this service will end with a prayer for blessing. But firstly, a huge thank you for everybody who's been involved in putting this service together and the hard work this has involved. A few notices, however, before we end with a prayer for blessing. These services will continue to be streamed every Sunday at 10 o'clock. And the web address for the church will be on the screen at the end. And this is going to obtain a place where you can access the new sheet. The new was for April is out due this weekend. If you'd like to request a prayer for yourself, or for somebody, or a member of the family, the prayer emails will be shown at the end of the screen as well. I would like to wish Myra Disney, a member of our congregation, a very special birthday congratulation as she celebrates her 98th birthday today as well. Please continue to support and pray for our food bank as well, which again the relevant information is shown at the end of the screen. So until we meet again, I pray that you and your loved ones are safe and well. And I want to finally wish you again a very happy and blessed Easter. So let's just try and remember, as well as the chocolate heads, and yes, I'll be having one too, the true meaning of Easter, Jesus Christ's resurrection from the tomb, and shout as loud as we can, Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! And now to finish an Easter prayer of blessing. May the living God Remove the suffocating shroud that lies upon our world. May the risen Saviour draw the sting of death 
bringing all to life in him. May the flowing spirit set us and all creation free and seal our hearts with faith and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us each and every day always. Amen. <laughs>